Hi folks and welcome back. In my game of Pi I have definitely reached the phase of crazy upscaling. I now have productivity on my labs and normal productivity modules, which helps enormously. The next milestone is Pi Science Pack 3. So let's get started. I need some bedding for the next creatures, so I might as well just set it up now. The second part of scaling Yotoi. The Yotoi fruit is brought in from the other huge block. Half of this cotton gut block was just empty space, so I changed this by making more. I recently made more tar, which I can now process into more coke and all those juicy fluids. In comparison to the first block of this kind, I now provide gasoline on the train network and use a lot more electric boilers instead. And another small addition to my Moondrop production. I have just researched the ability to make all of those alloys from molten metals. That's a huge productivity boost. But I still need molten chromium. I try to fit it into here without rebuilding everything. Theoretically, I could upgrade the processing chain even more. But that would need a lot more work. So I leave it at grade 4 chromite. Nice! Not nearly a full belt of production, but that's more than enough for a while. It's a lot more than previously. The next creature has two brains, Arthurians. I make enough cobalt extract by now, so I can remove the artificial throughput limitations for TCL and nickel silicide. To scale complex circuit boards, I do need more of the antimony pulp. Here I will make anthraquinone from chromite sand, anthracene oil and sulfuric acid. This makes hydrogen peroxide actually available in larger amounts, without needing an unrealistic amount of arthropod blood. Arthurians need some science packs to develop their extraordinary brains. Luckily, I don't need many of them. Dedicated cellulose from raw fiber. Finally something that is a bit more efficient than using wood. And right next to it, I produce some grease. I don't plan to upgrade all my ore processing immediately, so one building is enough for now. Propene needs a small boost with a second building. The Cordex milk needs scaling as well. A small block for biofilm. Besides being used in better ore processing, this is required for graphene. I am running short on rayon, so I make more which also needs more sodium carbonate. This upgrade is a large one. It almost doubles my rubber production. I can accept a messy train station in return. I increase production of silicon carbide. It needs a lot of quartz ore. Maybe I should have built it next to the ore patch. Whatever, this is an issue that one or two extra trains can solve. Neural processors in my mall. I appreciate the 5 module slots of the data array. More of the advanced small parts. Still one building each, but now with a lot more inserters. Most players probably don't care about this. The buffer at the train station will fill up eventually, but balancing is an important aspect in my speedrun, especially with vanilla trains. More Bakelite by making more zinc chloride. The neural processors were required for the research center Mark II. Time for an additional productivity boost. By the way, I continuously use productivity modules to alleviate some bottlenecks. At the moment I don't have access to all Mark II buildings yet, and using them everywhere is too costly anyway. As a rule of thumb, I try to upgrade those buildings to Mark II that also get productivity modules. This is the last block of orcs for a while, I promise. After all, that's block number 7 already. 
making graphene rolls requires a bunch of different steps, but overall it's not really difficult. Using just the overflow of boric acid is no longer enough. I need a dedicated line to make more. This is more or easier using brute force. I never really had the science packs available for those optional upgrades. Right next to the good alien sample, I squeeze in the great alien sample. The amount of train stations somehow gets out of hand. Scaling chlorine is easy with so many dead orcs. I need more bio samples. With more fish food, I can increase production of fish and fish oil. Making mechanical parts Mark II in my mall is easy. I delayed it until now because they need electronics Mark II. Just like productivity modules. And I had my priorities. But things have changed. I have kind of enough modules now. Rubber consumes all of my ethylene. I should make more. I also need more Nexalit plates and don't quite feel like spamming dinosaurs. So I switch to molten Nexalit. This just needs a few buildings. And a few more for sand. Cadaveric Arum, the next plant. If I need to research them, I can as well make some. There's not much to say about nanocrystalline cellulose. Just another step towards the next science pack. I need substantially more Kikalk. I even spent some extra science packs for the Kikalk Stage 2 technology. But they need more fertilizer, so I have to make more. Luckily, the overall demand of urea has gone down by now. So the fertilizer is basically free. I upgrade titanium, better late than never. This requires MIBC and so much space that I ship the Titanium Grade 3 into another city block. If I need even more, I can easily get more Grade 3 from my second Titanium mine. Cadaveric Arum is a bit annoying to scale up, so I started in my mall. I make my first Gridren, a carnivorous plant. Bio oil is a bit expensive. So far I could dodge it, but for Pi 3 it's required. Phosphate glass is only required to set up the next creatures. So I don't need much, but I have to get it running. My second real block for tin processing. And I also adjust my very first tin processing block to provide the molten tin onto the train network instead of the plates. These plants are real monsters. They eat Arthurians and fish. Don't look too close at all the blood. Time for more creatures. Scrondrix and Dingrid. I add another research center for chemical science packs. I can't sustain it, but to reach Pi 3 I still need a lot of research. I have to quickly make some niobium titanium alloy for the next creatures. Here the Scrondrix can live in peace. They will die soon enough. Because I need them as an organ donor. Dingrids need their special diet and also additional meat in the form of scrondrix. Eat and be eaten. Dilmos are the last required creature for Pi 3. That's already a few centrifuges for a little bit of aerogel. This will be a pain to scale in the late game. The northern part of my base was lacking fuel stations. So I had to change that. I only need the Dilmo X for science. But later I will also set up the module production anyway. Dingrids provide two special items. Spike and Pelt. Making diamonds seems to be complex with that many steps. But it's mainly one building each. Nothing to fear. Using a double block is the only way to fit all the buildings plus all the train stations and still leave it expandable for later. A proper bot mall needs full Roboport coverage. I'm working on it. So far, the raw gas was directly delivered to the Arcade Killer Bees. Doing that in a dedicated area is more flexible. 
I need the natural gas to make acrylic, which I built ahead of research. This part of my bot mall makes nanofibrils. I need more honey and R cards. I upgrade to the recently researched recipes. Just need to make some jelly on the side. Use Mark II centrifuges, Mark II sap and rock modules and a whole lot of spaghetti. I squeeze in more solder production. That's the negative side effect of only researching what is strictly necessary. I'm still making rails using the very first recipe, which needs 10 times the solder of the next recipe. Some of the additional honey goes straight into making Arcad propolis. Sodium hydroxide is running out again, so I have to make more. I use one of the two salt mines that previously provided salt directly onto the train network. I make heavy oil from distillates. For that I also drill into another bitumen seed and expand oil cracking with a bit of creativity. Better modules will help in the long run. So I try my luck with Fish Mark II and Kickhulk Mark II. I haven't expanded power for quite some time. But now it's necessary. I will need those additives later for bio ore and can already start making them. And I can already make boron, which is soon required to make neodymium. This also needs fuel rods. Thankfully I have stockpiled a few of those by now. Bio ore also needs three different kinds of biomass, which I can already make. Tributyl phosphate is another ingredient for bio ore. You see, the bio ore is really annoying and it's only researched with the very last technology. In the context of this being a speedrun, I try to prepare it as best as I can. For the bio ore, I belt in the biomass from the adjacent block, deliver the additives and the tributyl phosphate via train and at a few more seemingly random train stations. And all of that for just a few bio ore per minute. And then I set up everything in my mall to make the Pi Science Pack 3 with all its ingredients. Neodymium magnets and negasium. Now I only wait for research to finish and try to find and eliminate bottlenecks in the meantime. I mine another salty rock and put the salt directly onto the train network. Phosphoric acid is one of my bottlenecks, despite adding productivity modules and upgrading to Mark II buildings. Using lots of salt and hydrogen chloride to convert phosphine gas into more phosphoric acid might help. Despite doubling production previously, I'm always short on rubber so I add one more latex production cell. More fuel stations in the very south. I built a block dedicated to sulfuric acid, right next to the outlet gas processing, so that I can directly belt that huge amount of sulfur. I fill the next quarter of that power plant, and I increase production of casein, and try to crank out as many Pi-2 science packs as I can. In the meantime, I have produced the first Pi Science Pack 3. Milestone achieved. Reaching productivity science packs will probably take a bit longer. Research just gets so expensive and I start running into performance issues, which will force me to research more of the theoretically optional upgrades. And there's just so much new stuff to build and so many existing products to scale. Exciting times lie ahead. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and may your factory grow.